Hi, my name is Tensor from the Tensor Programming Blog. Welcome to Elm Tutorial Part 7. In today's tutorial, we're going to build a single page app using Elm. And this single page app is going to allow us to interface with Reddit. More specifically, it's going to allow us to select a subreddit and then load up all of the posts in said subreddit. And then we can click on the links and stuff and go to the specific you know, entries, etc. in the subreddit. The way we are going to do this is we are going to rely heavily on what are called commands in Elm. Now, Elm is a fully functional language, as you guys have already you know, already know, I've already seen before, but it utilizes two large features. One of them is called uh, subscriptions and the other one is called commands. Now subscriptions are for things like mouse inputs, keyboard inputs, time, things like that. You subscribe to things like that and you bring it into your code. But for commands, on the other hand, you they are mainly for Things like HTML events, um, reading and writing files, pulling stuff in from the operating system and, and stuff of that nature. Basically, Reddit gives us a nice little API and I'm gonna pull it up here and it's gonna look like a mess. And as you can see here, it's this is the JSON version of the Elm subreddit. The normal Elm subreddit looks like this and this is it in JSON. I'm not going to ask you guys to try and sort through this because I've already done it for us. This is the basic layout of the JSON. We have an outer data object, and then we have a children object, which is sort of an array, and then we have an inner data object. And inside of this inner data object for each post, we have a URL, which is like whatever. Then we have the title, which is the title of the uh, entry. Then we have a permalink, which is a common, which is like the end of the URL. It allows us to get to the comment section, basically. And then we have an ID, and the ID is something that's embedded inside both the permalink and the URL of the actual post. So these four elements are what we're going to be dealing with inside of our application. Even though there's a lot more information inside of this big body of JSON text, we only really need those four elements. All right, so you, some of you may have noticed we're actually using Emacs. I plan to make a video on Emacs later. For now, just know that it is probably the best IDE that you can use. And by IDE, I mean just text editor, period. Uh, for really any programming language, I just wanted to show you guys that there are alternatives. All right, so let's get started. First thing we want to do with any Elm project is to actually make our package.json file. So we type in Elm package install and we want to install a few packages as well. So we want to install one called Elm Lang HTTP because we're dealing with HTTP events. So this will install the core library as well as our HTTP package. The other one that we want to install is elm community backslash json extras or it's a single json extra and this package is going to allow us to decode the json that we pull in through our http events so those are the two packages that we're going to need for this project for at least now uh, in the future and by the future i mean in the next tutorial we will actually start working with a few other packages to bring in some styling and really showcase the strength of Elm as a language. So the first thing we want to do is import HTML and we want to expose everything. We want HTML attributes, of course. We want HTML events as well. We want to import HTTP and we want to import JSON decode as JSON. So this will let us call the JSON decode library pretty easily. It'll make our code a little bit more legible. So now I've divided our application into six different categories. We have our model, our update, our view, our subscriptions, our commands, and our JSON. Now, typically you'd put JSON with commands, but in this case, I'm just going to do it for the sake of simplicity. All right, so here's what our model is going to look like. We have a subreddit, which is going to be of type subreddit, and we have a posts field, which is of type list post. 
So let's actually make our subreddit field. So our subreddit field is just going to be a name type string. And the reason why we're extracting it this way will become clear when we actually build our init function. Now here's our post type. So our post type has four different fields. We have our title, our URL, our permalink, and our ID. Now these are the same fields as what we talked about before when we were looking at the JSON. All right, so here's our init function. As you can see, it outputs a model and a command message as a tuple. And what our init function is doing here, we are passing a string called Elm to our subreddit. So basically, this field is becoming Elm, which is then being passed to our model. So it's just saying, okay, the subreddit is going to be called Elm. Then we have this empty list here, and this is taking the place of posts and then we're sending back no command. So basically what you will see on the screen is a input box with a button and it will say that we're on the Elm subreddit, but it won't show any of the current posts because we're not bringing any of them in with the init function. And so that's all we're going to do for our model. So now let's get over to our update. Now we need to make our union type with all of the messages. So our first message is going to be called open Reddit and we are going to pass to it a result. And this result is either going to be an HTTP error or it's going to be a list of posts. Then our other two messages are going to be get Reddit. Now this is going to help us update our Reddit and then we're going to have an update Reddit which is going to let us pass a string to it. Now our update function will take in a message and a model and output the model and a command message. So update message model equals case message of. In this case we want to pattern match on open Reddit with two different arguments being passed in. First one being OK OK JSON and the second one being ERRE. -E. And basically OK JSON is just saying, okay, we're getting JSON, as in like there's no error. And error E is saying, okay, we're getting an error. All right, so here is our basic pattern matching. So now what are we going to do if we get our JSON back? So if we do not get an error with open Reddit, we want to change our model, and specifically we want to change the post record, and we want to set our JSON into the post record. And then we want to, of course, pass back a command of none. For our open Reddit error part, we want to send to our debug log a two string version of the error itself. And we want to pass back the model. So basically the error won't affect the model itself. For our get Reddit message, we are going to return the model and then we are going to return a command which is our function that we're going to make called get info. And inside of get info, we're going to pass in the subreddit name, which is the model.subreddit.name. For our update Reddit message, we are just going to update the model, specifically the subreddit. So this field. And we are just going to call a function called update selection on a string or on the string that's being passed through it and it's going to change the model that way. So our update selection function, the function that we're calling here, is just going to take in a string and pass back a subreddit. And all we're basically doing with this function is we're using this um, subreddit type that we created and we're calling it on the string that we're passing through it. So basically it's sort of like calling the two string function on a non string variable and converting it to a string. So we're just converting our string to a subreddit. All right. So now we're going to look at our view. Now this is where things get a little bit more complicated. So our view function is going to take in the model and output HTML and a message. So our first view has first a div and then inside that div we have another div. And inside of that div, we have an input. So our input is going to be of type text. So it'll be a text box and we'll have a placeholder that just says subreddit in it. Let's make that capitalized. And then we'll have an input. So every single time a user types into it, it will call our update Reddit function or message rather, which will just convert that into a string. After our input, we'll have a button, which will have an on click event. And the on click event will be our get Reddit 
message, which we'll call our commands that we will create later. And it'll just say go on it. So it'll just be a button that says go, we click it, and it will load up the subreddit that we want to see, or whatever that we've put into the input box here. So now after our button, we want two H3s and a div. Our first H3 is just going to have text a text version of the model.subreddit.name. Then our next H3 will have a text version of a link that will be HTTPS www.reddit.com backslash r concatenated with our model.subreddit.name. So this won't actually be a link, it'll just be a text version of this link. And then this div down here, we're going to actually remove the second empty list on the div. And then we're going to map a list of the, the posts that we're bringing in. So all of the posts will be inside of this div and they'll be repeated multiple times. So we'll build a function called post view and this function will take in our model.posts. So that's all we need to do for the view function. So now let's build our post view function. So our post view function is going to return HTML and a message and it's going to take in a post. So our Post view is going to have a link, and this link will have our post.url inside of it, and the text will be the post.title, so it'll be the title of the post with a link to the post link. Then we will have another link, and this link will be a concatenation of reddit.com with our post permalink. So if you remember what our permalink looked like, as you can see, it starts with a backslash, and then it has comment section for the posts that we're coming into. And then after it, we're going to have just a div and this will have just a separator. So as you can see, I just used uh, some you know, greater than and equal than signs and then I just used some equal signs in between. And this is just a placeholder for now. When we add some actual, you know, actual CSS or rather when we add some actual styling through Elm, in the next tutorial, we can get rid of this. But for now, it's just gonna make things a little bit more organized. So now we're gonna do our subscriptions, and this is very easy. So our subscriptions function itself, as we have none in this actual program, it's just going to return sub.none. So now let's get into our commands, and this is where most of the logic of our program lies. So remember that get info function that we had up here, here, for our get reddit message? That's what we're creating now. So the get info is going to take in a string. It's going to return a command message. So our get info function is just going to be a let in binding. And as you can see, our let binding is binding two variables. One of them is URL. The URL is being bound to www.reddit.com backslash r concatenated with string and then concatenated with dot JSON. And then we are binding a request variable or which it was just been shortened to req to http.get our url which is this json and then we're calling a function called decode reddit on this url and then we're putting all of this inside of an http.send in which we're sending open reddit and then our request so open reddit is our message that we created up here right here open reddit so we're basically going to fetch the json data and then we're using this decode reddit function to decode that json data so even though we only have one function in commands it's mainly where we are getting our information from reddit so our decode reddit function is just going to return a json decoder of a list post so remember the structure of our json let me pull up this little notepad again so all we're really looking at right here is this data children part. So we're basically saying for the JSON at data children, pull in all of this other stuff. So we're pulling in this entire slice of JSON here, and then we're passing it to this decode post function. So our decode post function is just going to return a JSON decoder of post type. All right, so our decode post function is calling this json.map4 function. And what it's doing is it's allowing us to map four pieces of JSON to our post um, type. 
So our post type has four fields, title, URL, permalink, and ID. All of them are strings. And what we're doing is we're basically specifying, okay, at the part of JSON that's data and then title, turn that information into a string and then map it to our post.title. So order matters in this case. So for our next one, we want our data URL. Now we're mapping our data URL, our data permalink, and our data ID to our post. So that's basically it for our program. We just need to create our main function. Now remember in Elm 0.18, the HTML program stencil was put into the HTML library. So all we have to do is call HTML and then call program and then fill in the appropriate parts. So init equals init update equals update view equals view and subscriptions equals subscriptions. And that's it. So now let's actually take a look at this in our Elm reactor and see what we've got. Now one of the cool things about Emacs and Elm is that you can just run Elm reactor from right inside of it. So as you can see, I just hit Alt X and then I typed in Elm reactor. And here we go. I've got a command called run Elm reactor. And if I go to localhost 8000, I can just click main.elm. And here is our program. So as you can see, our init is just saying elm. And then it has the URL for the elm subreddit. So if we actually type in elm now and hit go, it'll pop up with all the comments, or not comments, but the threads. And as you can see, we have our link here, and then we have our comments. And this is actually all running together. So let's change our view slightly fix this. All we have to do is put a div between the two and uh, we can just put some quick text inside of it as well if we want. Now if we reload it and we just navigate to our Elm, here we go. So now everything is divided separately. I mean I would probably add a few more plus signs to make this a little bit more consistent but whatever it's not a big deal. We just wanted to make things look uh, interesting. We also have our debugger here. And as you can see, our posts has all the lists of the posts here. And it has all the permalinks and stuff. So it has the ID, permalink, title, and URL of each of our posts. And then we have our subreddit with the name of Elm. And we can go to all the different subreddits we want. So we can go to the Golang subreddit. And as you can see, we've got our Golang posts and entries and stuff. And if we go to one, It'll just take us directly to the link that's being shared. And we can go to the comments section as well. As you can see, and this is actually the Reddit page. So yeah, in our next Elm tutorial, we will look at adding styling to this application. So we'll look at, more specifically, we'll look at the material design library in Elm. It is pretty robust and pretty nice. I'd say it's probably one of the most mature CSS frameworks in Elm, or one of the more mature ones currently. Don't worry guys, I haven't forgotten about the Go tutorials. Those will continue as normal. I just thought that for a nice change of pace, we'd go back to Elm for a little while. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial. If you like this tutorial, feel free to subscribe and like the video. If you have any questions or comments, then by all means, comment in the comment section. And if you dislike this video, then by all means, hit the dislike button as much as you want. Anyway, I hope you guys have a good night.